Hi, I'm Isaiah Cox, the CEO of WheelTug PLC, and I'd like to speak to you today about WheelTug. The WheelTug concept is actually quite simple. The WheelTug is an onboard system that moves the aircraft on the ground using electric motors. Today's aircraft push back from the gate using a pushback tractor and then taxi all the way out to the runway using the engines. And then when the aircraft lands, it also uses the engines to taxi in. That's the left panel without wheel tug. On the other hand, using the wheel tug system, we have two major advantages. The first is that we don't use a pushback tractor at all in pushing back from the gate. Instead, the wheel tug system drives the aircraft backward, and then it drives the airplane forward instead of using the engines all the way out to the runway, where it is activated just two or three minutes before the takeoff roll commences. Then when the aircraft lands, the aircraft engines can also be turned off after the requisite three minutes, and then the airplane taxis in to the gate and parks using the wheel tug system. The wheel tug itself is actually a very simple and straightforward system. There are only a couple major components. One are the twin motors in the nose gear itself. You have the inverter in the E&E &E bay, and then you have the cockpit interface. These are connected by means of standard wire harnesses, and the power is provided by the APU. This system is designed to be retrofit and can go into and out of an airplane as the airline sees fit. So in addition to being a rapid retrofit product applicable to existing fleets of narrow-body aircraft and operating from the APU, it's important to point out that the airplane will not be talking to the wheel tug system in any meaningful sense. The only interaction is with the pilot themselves. The system is MEL exempt, which means that if the wheel tug is not operational for whatever reason, then the airplane can be moved with a pushback tug and with the engines as it does today. And very importantly, for a retrofit perspective, the modifications to the airplane in order to allow the wheel tug to fly with the aircraft are quite minor and essentially involve the wire harness and putting the inverter and cockpit panel in. There are no changes to the wheel well space. I would point out that wheel tug is partnered with quite a number of prominent companies that are providing between them all of the software and hardware necessary in order to deliver the system on time um, and at a very high quality to our airline customers. Note that we're working both with resource group and software, the ICE Corporation providing the power electronics, as well as some very respected companies in, in cockpit controls, for example, like Gables, um, and the list goes on. Note also that we have the cooperation of Prague Airport, uh, formerly, and uh, they have been of great assistance in making it possible for WheelTug to conduct the necessary tests of the system on, on aircraft. One of the questions that has been asked about the wheel tug system is how it functions on snow and ice. This is actually something that we tested back in November of 2010 in Prague on a 737NG. And I encourage anyone who's interested to view the video. The link can be found on this slide. In terms of understanding what the wheel tug brings to an airline, it's very important to note that there are different kinds of savings that are clearly evident. The first are savings like fuel and pushback savings, as well as the flight weight issues. These are hard dollar numbers, numbers that anyone can compute, that the numbers are very clearly understandable and are worth a considerable amount of money. Soft dollar savings are figures that are not yet established, but will be established as operational data is gathered. This includes things like brake wear and the engine damage from the fog. Lastly, we have the other dollar savings. You can see tug damage, emissions, and things of the sorts. Um, these are all savings that have real value and add to the underlying benefits of the wheel tug, but to which we do not give any quantifiable numbers at this time. As you can see here, the savings per flight and the savings per year per aircraft are substantial, just using the fuel burn pushback and conservative time savings valuations on the order of $400,000 per airplane per year. When you add those numbers together with the known soft dollar savings, which include the FOD, the foreign object debris and damage costs, direct and indirect costs, as accepted by the FAA, then you see that the wheel tug system saves on the order of $600,000 per year per aircraft, 
not including the brakeware costs, uh, the nose gear wear advantages, and the other softer savings that we identified in the earlier slide. I should note that this is very much an overview, and I very much welcome anyone contacting me to ask for more information. In terms of the other dollar savings, one prominent one to use as an example is to show how an airplane with wheel tug would save considerable time for an airport and general airline operations. In this picture, you can see that if any one of these aircraft in the middle of the photograph push back, then it blocks the ramp for all other airplanes coming and going. This is a very substantial operational problem for airports and for airlines trying to get aircraft in and out as quickly as they can. Note that with wheel tug, we save at least two minutes in this pushback process and possibly much more than that, which means that the blockages will be reduced and allow you to get more gate throughput and more airport throughput for the same real estate. As you can see from this picture in Atlanta, the two aircraft in the top left are blocking the taxiway for all other airplanes coming and going. So the advantage of saving two minutes in that pushback sequence allows you to get more gate throughput and taxi throughput even in an airport that in theory is nowhere near as space constrained as Heathrow. A lot of airlines ask us on a regular basis how much weight is actually added to the system. And the short answer is that the wheel tug will add about 300 pounds dry weight to the aircraft. But in terms of flight weight, we're actually going to be weight neutral or better. And this is why. The airplane has to take off with its fuel minimums. But when the aircraft is fueled, the pilot has no way of knowing how long an unexpected taxi delay may be. So on a typical day out of Heathrow, for example, they'll put 45 to 60 minutes of extra taxi fuel on board the airplane. And every once in a while, they'll use that because there will be an extra taxi delay of 45 minutes. However, on most flights, there won't actually be that delay, which means that the airplane takes off 45 minutes of taxi fuel extra heavy. Because the APU burns significantly less fuel per minute than the jet engine, it means that in airports where a significant taxi fuel margin is carried, the wheel tug will actually reduce the flight weight of the airplane. And in your typical airport, the wheel tug will probably take off with the airplane at about the same flight weight as it would without the wheel tug system. So let's talk about the typical flying day for an airplane. Wake up in the morning, and of course, the goal is to get flying as soon as possible. Wheel tug has an advantage here, especially in curfew-controlled airports, where the wheel tug system can start the airplane, move it all the way out to the runway before the curfew is lifted. So the engines turn on just before takeoff at the beginning of the runway, instead as they do today at the beginning of the gate. That can save 10 or 15 minutes right there very easily. Then you add up two minutes or more every single flight per day, and at the end of your flying day, you've either had a, a day with many, many more on-time departures and arrivals, or the opportunity to squeeze in an extra flight here or there. That's a particularly huge advantage when you talk about maximizing the returns from an existing aircraft fleet. Getting more flights per day is very, very important. To your right, you can see the typical cockpit control panel that's been assembled by Gables for the wheel tug system. And on the left, you can see its location um, in a 737, 700, or 800 configuration as flown by Southwest Airlines. The system is characterized by having a thumb toggle on the left, allowing the pilot to move forward and backward very easily, as well as a speed hold button, which functions exactly like a cruise control on the car. The pilot gets the airplane up to the speed he wants, pushes the speed hold, and the airplane goes along at that speed, unless and until the pilot either puts in another input or taps the brakes. This system allows the pilot to have his hands free during taxi for other checklist activities. After some years in development, the wheel tug is now at the stage of demonstrating in-wheel electric motor and gear system that allows the airplane to achieve all of the operational goals that we have set for it. This is what we're calling M1, and we are now working on that to have it ready and tested on aircraft in the coming months. Thank you very much for your time and watching this presentation. Please contact me for further questions and information. My phone number is 410-419-0082, and the email address is also as shown on the slide.